In our last Sniper Tips and Tricks video, I asked you guys your own sniping secret, and some of you were kind enough to share some of your personal tips in the comment section to help more players who want to improve on sniping. There were four comments that took our attention, so we took down notes right away and decided to make a video of it and explain it to you guys further. Because I'm not kidding when I say that here are four sniping tips that I wish I knew sooner. I want to give a shout out to these four players who commented on my last sniper video and to everyone else who left a comment. Sync ADS to FOV scope zoom has been added in the game five months ago, and for those who don't know, in short, it's a setting that makes your ADS scope zoom the same as your FOV value. You might want to turn it on if you like to play aggressively, especially when using SMGs, as it can help with consistency when snapping on targets and help you see enemies or objects that you wouldn't normally see when the setting is turned off. The same also applies to snipers as turning on this feature lowers your zoom value depending on your current camera FOV, helping you adjust to close range fights easily without sacrificing too much zoom value for long range fights. Here is an example of a sniper scope zoom with the setting turned off on 60 FOV, 75 FOV, and 90 FOV. Here is an example of a sniper scope zoom with the setting turned on, 60 FOV, 75 FOV, and 90 FOV. Take note that this setting is not for everyone and you should consider the device you're playing on, how good is your eyesight, and what camera FOV value you're using. It all comes down to personal preference and having the Sync ADS to zoom feature on may look satisfying to watch but it doesn't mean that you have to use it too. I have a couple of friends that has this feature turned on since release because they want a new experience for the game and they think that it looks nice. Meanwhile, I personally like it turned off as I don't want to ruin my muscle memory and maintain a good and consistent view of my target. If you're only just hearing about this setting today, I highly recommend checking out my video about it in the description below. This setting is a great way to improve your aim and accuracy while having its own pros and cons and it's definitely something that every player should know. This setting wasn't a huge thing when it got released because it doesn't really affect or give you the need to change your gameplay compared to the Sync ADS to FOV zoom when you try it for the first time. Realistic scope adds realism by basically letting you see through the scope before the animation ends. Here's a side by side comparison of this setting when turned on and off. Here's a short gameplay of mine using the realistic scope turned on and give you my honest thoughts about it. I now agree to what this guy said, it may not be a game breaking thing inside the game, but it actually helps you to have a better feel and view whenever you aim at your target. I might turn this setting on when I'm going to use the 3x or 4x scope on my SVD because it looks way more clean that way compared to when this setting is turned off. As for the DLQ and Locus, I prefer it turned off just because I'm already used to the default animation. Overall, I think it's a pretty good setting to turn on if you want to have a cleaner scope, bigger reticle, and a smoother scope animation, and it doesn't hurt to try something new from time to time. Are you a player who can do a 180 turn when you swipe to the right, but can't do a full 180 turn when you swipe to the left? That's an example of having an unbalanced swiping habit. You are unconsciously way too focused on one side that you forgot how to do it on the opposite side. After reading this comment, I realized that I made a similar mistake in Ranked not too long ago where I would keep on sliding to the same direction, which made me become an easy kill for the enemy as I was very easy to predict. Just like the user said in the comment, most players can do a full dolphin jump to the right, but they struggle doing it to the left. So try setting a goal, do a full 180 turn for each side like we mentioned earlier, so you can have an idea of how you can fix it. How fast should you swipe and how many swipes do you need for this direction? These are the questions you should ask yourself specifically if you're struggling on doing consistent 180 turns for both left and right. If you struggle doing dolphin jumps for both sides, hop on the single player mode so you can work with different types of cover and elevations depending on the map. Increase your HUD opacity a little so you can know if you're pressing the right buttons and you can also try to record your gameplay and compare how you dolphin jump to the left and how you dolphin jump to the right. By being able to balance your swipes, you can do multiple movement and aim techniques towards any direction and what fits best in the current situation. It can have a huge impact on your performance and help you get the most out of your gameplay. This is something that you can fix or improve in less than an hour, and it's probably something that most players including me didn't pay attention to, so thank you to AimDoth for this tip. Gyroscope Okay, before you guys tell me in the comments, but Kith, I don't use gyro. But Kith, gyro is too hard for me. But Kith, I play on iPad. I know, I know, I understand that gyroscope is not for everyone, but hear me out first. 
For this part, I will talk about gyros specifically for snipers only, so comment down below if you want me to make a full in-depth gyroscope guide next. Moving on with the video, I personally don't use gyroscope, so I asked a couple of tips from Maki on how he uses gyroscope when sniping. He said that one thing you should always remember is that using gyroscope doesn't have to be used as your primary way of aiming, but you should treat it more as a support to make small adjustments, not large ones. Using gyroscope as your main way of aiming not only causes you to play inconsistently, but it can also be tiring after playing a certain period of time. But how exactly can you use gyroscope when sniping? And what are the benefits you can get from it? If you're new to gyroscope, it is important to start on a low sensitivity and gradually increase it as you get more comfortable. You don't want to start on a high sensitivity value as it will likely give you a headache and have a hard time getting used to it. We suggest you to set your standard camera sensitivity to 50 or below and set your sniper sensitivity to 10. Don't worry, I will explain why later. What Mahi usually does is he uses gyroscope to help him center his aim and we all know by now that proper centering is crucial when it comes to sniping. Having gyro for your standard camera can be helpful for doing micro managements, letting your thumb or finger to focus on swiping towards your target and help you land more shots once you get the hang of it. Another useful thing about gyroscope is that you can use it to counter your idle sway. Idle sway, or also known as radical sway, happens after you finish aiming down sight after a couple of seconds with your sniper. Scoping out and scoping in again with your sniper is the only way to reset your idle sway, and using the iron lung spurt can increase your focus duration. But what if I told you you don't need any of that to hold an angle? Exactly, we're going to use gyroscope to control the idle sway. 7 to 10 sniper scope gyro sensitivity is the sweet spot and you don't want it to be higher than that because it might mess up your sniping consistency. Just a quick recap, set your camera sensitivity somewhere below 50, use it for adjusting your crosshair placement. Set your sniper scope sensitivity somewhere between 7 to 10 and use it to counter idle sway. Lower or increase your gyro sensitivity by 3s or 5s depending on which sensitivity value you're comfortable playing at. These two things might seem like it won't make a huge impact in your gameplay at all, but sometimes it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. It's all about finding the right sensitivity just for you to make your sniping experience a lot easier yet effective. Now that the new COD Mobile update can now run 120 frames per second on some devices, do you think frames win games? Let us know down in the comments below. If you're looking to use any of the settings mentioned in this video for snipers, you can practice them right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.